Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I keep you up to date with all of the latest gaming news. And yeah, so a former Sony developer came out and made a pretty bold statement about the power advantage for the Xbox Series X over the PlayStation 5. I mean, I think by this point, we kind of know that the Series X is the most powerful console heading into next generation, but we've seen some debates about this and some fans are trying to twist the narrative here. But stick with me and we will talk all about what this former Sony developer had to say about the power gap between the Series X and the PlayStation 5. We do have plenty of other things to talk about as well though, including the Resident Evil game coming out in 2021 may not be what anybody is really expecting, so stay tuned for all that as well. First though, I do have to say that I'm really not a big fan of April Fool's Day. I mean, it's not that I can't take a joke or anything, but I'd rather be tricked in a clever way rather than somebody just saying, oh, I lied, well, I got you. And that does seem to be what a lot of game studios does on April Fool's Day or even news websites. So I'm just not a big fan of that. To me, it's to me, that's just annoying. So don't worry. There is no April Fool's jokes here. It's news, news, news per usual. And speaking of that, Platinum Games revealed their fourth game announcement. Of course, they have been hyping up four different announcements for the first four months of the year, which includes a wonderful 101 remaster. We got Project GG, and they also announced a new Tokyo Studio. With that said, unfortunately, their fourth announcement, quite simply, is just an April Fool's joke. I guess this was planned all along, and I know it's not the best news in the world, but the way I look at it is that Platinum Games I mean, they have a lot of great stuff coming and they won't be spreading themselves too thin. That was something that I was a bit concerned about before because they do have like four games in development. I mean, they have Wonderful 101, which I do assume is finished, but not released yet. They also have Project GG, Bayonetta 3, and that's a big one. And of course, they also have Babylon's Fall. So yeah, at least they're not spreading themselves too thin here. And hopefully those games do turn out great. And since we are on the topic of Japanese games, Trails of Cold Steel 4 got a big announcement today. Trails of Cold Steel 4 will be a multi-platform game being available on the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and on PC. Unfortunately, it will not be on Xbox, and it's also a timed PlayStation 4 exclusive, so Switch and PC fans will have to wait until 2021 to play it, while PlayStation 4 fans will get to play it this fall. Either way though, I view this as relatively good news that it is already confirmed to be on multiple platforms and a lot of people will get to enjoy it. The Trolls of Cold Steel series is one of the better JRPGs of recent years, so if you do like JRPGs, I would highly recommend it. With that said though, it is a series that I think to enjoy it to its fullest, then it's best to play all four of the games. So hopefully Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 does come over to the Switch as well, which are currently absent on the console. For that matter, bring over Trails of the Sky to the Switch, which I do believe that to be the better series in the franchise. I do like Trails of Sky a lot more personally, just my opinion. Moving on though, we do have one last quick update to talk about before getting into the bigger stuff. And that is about Ubisoft because they're doing a very pro-consumer thing here as they will be giving away multiple free games over the next month to try and keep people from leaving their home. This is actually a really cool thing to do and it starts off with Rayman Legends and you can download that right now for free on PC until April 3rd on Uplay. Unfortunately, it is not on Steam, so you do have to play this on Uplay, but nonetheless, it is free, so definitely go check that out. I actually do believe that Rayman Legends is one of the best 2D platformers on the market. So yeah, again, it's free. Definitely go check it out. And of course, Ubisoft will be doing other free games this month. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them drop one or even multiple of the Assassin's Creed games for free as well. Now that would be really cool, but Ubisoft will be doing free trials and discounts as well. So there is no guarantee on that. They may not be willing to give away some of their biggest AAA games away for free, so, you know, don't count on it per se. Either way, though, I like this, and it's one of the cooler things I've seen from big publishers during the worldwide crisis that's happening right now. In other news, though, yes, a former Sony developer that worked for Guerrilla Games took to Twitter saying this about the power gap between the Series X and the PlayStation 5. 
I've chatted to a few developers and they have confirmed the power difference is quite staggering. However, they have said it doesn't mean you can't make good games on the PlayStation 5. These fanboys clearly don't care about that and are massively rattled. Those are pretty strong words from Chris Grinnell, and I know most people are really going to focus on the word staggering here because that makes it sound as if the Series X has a huge advantage. But moving beyond just that, Chris Grinnell is actually talking about multiple developers here, and that to me is the interesting part because something we saw after the PlayStation 5 reveal was that Jason Schreer talked about how multiple developers he was talking to was super excited to work on the PlayStation 5 because the solid state drive, and fans shouldn't just look at specs alone. However, what Chris Grinnell said is completely contradictory of that and states what the specs clearly show side by side. Yes, the Series X is significantly more powerful than the PlayStation 5. I don't think that is really too surprising, but we are seeing some quote unquote hardcore fans kind of try to twist the narrative a little bit here. And this is something that has become a little amusing as time goes on because even Digital Foundry seems like they're kind of getting sick of fans trying to create their own narrative. Of course, Digital Foundry does a fantastic job of diving into the technical aspects of each console, game, and their performance, but over on the form of Reset Era, there is a lot of things that are getting thrown out there that is just quite simply wrong, and somebody on Digital Foundry that goes by the username of Dictator, I think that's what it is, is having to correct users on a daily basis, and it really is very simple. The PlayStation 5 has a faster solid state drive, but every other aspect of the console, the Series X is better in. It has a better graphics card running at a sustained 12.1 teraflops compared to the 10.3 boosted teraflops on the PlayStation 5. Remember that is boosted and the PlayStation 5 will not always run at 10.3 teraflops. The Series X also has a better processor and really the list just kind of goes on from there. I mean, we've talked about the specs at length in the past here on the channel. And as Dictator keeps pointing out, sometimes things are just better. And in the case of the Series X, it should run games better on the Series X more often than not. That doesn't mean that the PlayStation 5 is a weak console because, well, that's not true either. The PlayStation 5 is a really good looking console on paper, and I'm sure the solid state drive probably is very exciting for developers. Of course, the Series X also has a solid state drive, of course, though. Yes, the PlayStation 5 has a faster solid state drive, but there is more to it than just that. And another myth I keep seeing fans throw out there is that the Series X is just kind of trying to brute force things and that's not true either. Both of these consoles have been worked on for years by way smarter people than you or I, and each component that they used in these consoles is there for a very specific reason. At the end of the day, I expect both of these consoles to run phenomenally well, and both consoles will have great games. PlayStation, of course, has some great first-party developers. You have developers like Naughty Dog and Insomniac, and I'm sure they will make some great games next generation. And then the Xbox has a ton of new first party developers all of their own, and I think that they will do a great job in that regard as well. So just go out there and play what you like, and there is no need to try and twist anything. This is a part of the reason that I started this channel in the first place, because there is people who try to manipulate the narrative, and to me that's just not okay. So I'm really glad to hear Chris Grinnell come out here and speak for some developers as well as Digital Foundry and Dictator on trying to stop some of the false narratives from getting too far. The way I look at it is both consoles are powerful, the Series X is the most powerful, both consoles are fast, and yes, the PlayStation 5 has the fastest solid state drive. I don't think we need to jump through hoops to try and change this. I am done ranting now though, however, I do apologize, but moving on, Game Vice is once again accusing Nintendo of copyright infringements and are now trying to block Nintendo from being imported into the United States. Of course, we have seen Game Vice in the past go to court with Nintendo over the Switch Joy-Con, which apparently, according to Game Vice, copied them. Though, and this is just me, when I look at Game Vice, while they do share similarities with the Joy-Con, they look way different to me. The game vice looks like it has an extension bracket on the back where the Joy-Cons attach to a console, 
and more so the game vice is for mobile phones, not a dedicated console. They're completely different markets, or at least in my opinion. I mean, for that matter, there is a lot of devices like this on mobile devices. I myself own the Razer Jungle Cat, which is very similar to the Switch Joy-Cons. I don't know, to me this just sounds like a sad attempt for Game Vice to make some money. I think this speaks volumes on how well that product is probably doing. It must not be selling too well, so they're targeting Nintendo in order to make some money or get some advertising done here, because of course news websites, or even me, is reporting on this thing. I would have never heard of the Game Vice if it wasn't for this. I do think Game Vice will once again lose another case though, but I guess we'll wait and see what happens. And now for the last topic of the day, Insider Dusk Gollum, which I feel like I've talked about him a lot lately, but he is now saying that the 2021 Resident Evil game will be the biggest departure for the franchise ever. He even goes so far as to say that it will more than likely make fans mad when they first see it, but he assures everybody that internal tests have been good and points to a high quality game. So from what he does say, we should have an open mind here when it does get revealed and don't expect it to look like Resident Evil 3. This of course is supposed to be like a medieval Resident Evil game from my understanding and it'll even be in first person, but I'm curious to why he says it's the biggest departure. We have had a first person Resident Evil game already. Resident Evil 7 was in first person view and that was a great game. I'm thinking it might have something to do with the enemies possibly. We are more used to fighting human like enemies such as zombies, but what if they go a completely different route here? We did hear that it may have a werewolf like enemy, so maybe that's what he's talking about? I'm not really sure, but of course, as always, we should take this with a grain of salt. Dusk Gollum is a pretty credible insider when it comes to this type of stuff, but that doesn't mean he cannot be wrong. He still is just an insider, so this is absolutely no confirmation. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.